what areas of your life are you avoiding possibly because you fear what would happen if it worked, not necessarily what the fear of what would happen if it didn't work, you know, that, that promotion at your company, not the fear of not getting the promotion. Is it possibly the fear of what your life looks like if you got it and the responsibility that comes along with that position versus the position that you're at? What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ah, Man, I'm losing my howling voice. It's going away. I don't know what's happening. But lone wolf at it again. We'll try to make it through. I uh, wanted to come at you guys with a quicker uh, episode today. This is episode 129 of the Sales Wolves podcast. And a lot of, we've had some episodes in the past, so a lot of what we've talked about before, but a lot of what everyone is talking about on social media when it comes to failure or when it comes to fear is the fear of failure. And the fear of failing in front of other people. I know Gary Vee talks about that a lot, that it's not so much that you feel failure, is that you feel failing, fear of failing in front of others, like your friends, your family, your peers. But today, I want to talk about a little bit of a different take, which is the fear of success, the fear not of failing, the fear of succeeding, the fear of winning. Because I think it's something that's not talked about often, but it is very real and quite frankly is probably holding a lot of a lot of you back from maybe not any success, but from ultimately the levels of success that your potential could take you. And let me just kind of break it down and start it off this way. And with our recruiting process with our company, uh, it's very, very, very in depth. Um, we we have gotten it down to a science, making sure that we have the exact right person to take over a territory within uh, within our uh, organization. And part of that process and the recruiting process when we interview them, and, and I'm typically one that's going through that first initial interview process, we ask them what the most money they've ever made in their life was. And there's no right or wrong answer, whether it was 30,000 or whether it was 3 million, it really doesn't matter. Um, that's not the determining factor and why we ask that question. That's not ultimately what we're trying to get out of that, that question, but it's really the second part of that question. So if someone said, you know, the most they'd ever made was a hundred thousand dollars in a year. Great. That's awesome. The second part of that question is, you know, if you were to come on board with us, and over the next 12 months, we see this year as a success. You look at it as a, you look at it as a success. We look at it as a success. And let's say you made 250. Most you've ever made is 100. Let's say over the next 12 months, you make 250. What does life look like? What changes about your life? Just paint a picture for me of what life looks like at a you know double, almost triple your highest income level. And that's really where the question gets interesting because number one, have they ever even thought about what their life looked like at that type of increased income level? And as I go through this example, obviously income level isn't the only determination uh, of success and isn't the only um, um, uh, outcome or the only, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, symptom you know, of success, um, you know, external, uh, but it's certainly a good one. It's a good measuring stick uh, for success. And so, you know, number one, can they even paint that picture of what it looks like? Like, what does life look like? And I've had people respond during the interview process, like, oh my gosh, like, I mean, I, to make 250, you know, I, I, first I would be, you know, just blown away and I would be just, you know, like, how did this happen? Like I've had people say that and I, and I can certainly you know understand that, but then I've had other people that are very, very detailed and telling me like, well, I, I would probably be in, the, be in the same house. I would have paid down all my debt. I would have at that point, you know, be on track, um, to, you know, get a new car. I would be on track to, you know, give my wife the opportunity or my husband the opportunity to not have to work because I was bringing in enough income for both of us. I would, you know, be able to take that vacation that I've really wanted to take for the last 10 years that I've been thinking about and be able to take that trip to, you know, Italy with my family 
family or, or to wherever. And I'd be able to do this. I'd be able to do that. I'd be able to, you know, put away more for retirement. I'd be able to pervade, pay for my three kids college. And, you know, they'll go in de- into detail and in all these things. Um, the reason why we ask that is because the potential income with our company is that and greater, but we serve in exclusive territory. And we want to make sure that that is someone that's not going to get to that territory and is going to get to a hundred thousand and be satisfied. We want someone that's going to get to a hundred thousand and say, okay, great. I've gotten to a hundred thousand. What do I need to do to get to 150, to get to 200, to get to 250. And when they get to 250, that they're still itching at what does 300 look like? What does 350 look like? What does 400 look like? And so it's painting a picture for us is, is that person someone that's going to be hungry and always looking um, for that next level of success? But what we find in that process is those that haven't even thought about it may fear what that level of success brings. There have been coordinators that we've brought on with our company that once they've reached a certain level of success, you know, really going any further beyond that. It's really not of interest to them or that's how they'll claim it. But the reality is it's just a fear to them of what that that enhanced level of income. You know, what am I going to do for taxes? We literally have we'll have people that they almost fear what getting that extra money will do as far as how they're going to have to handle it. Like I'm going to have to I'm going to have to, you know, create an S corp and I'm going to have to have a payroll company and I'm going to have to do this and that. And that becomes fear because it's based out of uncertainty. Like, I I don't know how I would handle, you know, this, this level of success. And so much of the time, uncertainty is the basis of where that fear comes from. And so my question to you guys, my challenge is, you know, the level of success that you've attained so far, is it possible that there is a fear of the next level of success? Is there, is it possible that there's a fear of the responsibility that comes with the next level of success in your life? Is there a fear of the increased workload that is not only going to be required to get to the next level of success, but is going to be required once you get there moving forward and how different that is from what you've done today? Is there a fear of the uncertainty of not knowing what it's going to take once you get there or what it's going to take to get there? And is it possible that the fear of success is actually holding you back more than the fear of failure? I think it's very easy for us to blame Uh, our lack of action, blame our lack of execution on the fear of failure. When in reality, sometimes it's actually the fear of what's going to happen if it works. You know, let's, let's give an example. An easy example for me to give is, uh, public speaking. It's great, you know, to, to say, Hey, I want to, I want to focus more on public speaking and for me to throw a goal out to, I want to speak on this many stages this year, or by the end of this year, I want to have spoken to 10,000 people. Right. And then at the end of the year, me to have looked back. And if I didn't hit that goal of saying, well, you know, there, I had a little bit of fear of failure. You know, I I didn't want to get up on stage and, you know, not do a good job. And that's why I didn't reach out to as many different associations and organizations and companies. And that's why I didn't book as much stuff because the fear that I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it you know, an adequate job. I wouldn't do a great job in, in executing on, on, on speaking from stage at that level. What if it was actually the fear of success? What if it was the fear of actually going out and doing such a good job that I would all of a sudden now be speaking way more frequently and speaking's not easy. Speaking's not natural. Speaking's not in your comfort zone. And so what if it's actually the fear of having success doing it, knowing that having success doing it would lead to doing it more and more and more and more and more. And what if that's actually what, what I was fearing is actually doing good at something that made me uncomfortable, doing good at something that got me out of my comfort zone, you know, executing at a high level at something that made me very uncomfortable, which would make it to where I had to become more uncomfortable more often. Does that make sense? And so what areas of your life are you avoiding possibly because you fear what would happen if it worked, not necessarily what f- the fear of what would happen if it didn't work, you know, that, that promotion at your company, not the fear of not getting the promotion, 
Is it possibly the fear of what your life looks like if you got it? And the responsibility that comes along with that position versus the position that you're at, the increased workload, the increase of people that you're responsible for managing, the increase in performance that you're now um, going to be you know, micromanaged on or scrutinized or evaluated on this new level of um, you know, sophistication and oversight brought into your life that now is, is overwhelming. So did you not get the promotion because you feared not getting it? Or did you not ultimately get the promotion because you actually feared what would happen if you actually got it? I think there are so many people that are living a life right now where they're comfortable where they're at and they actually fear what's on the other side of that comfort zone. They fear what's on that next level of success because it's uncertain and anything that's uncertain creates anxiety and that anxiety becomes fear. And so we figure out a way to put a label on it. And a lot of times we just disguise that fear of success as fear of failure because it makes us feel better. And so I would encourage you guys, I challenge you guys to look at the areas of your life right now. And what's that next level of success for you? What's that next level of promotion for you? What's that next level of advancement for you in your career, maybe even in your personal life? And start looking at what are the things that you could be fearing success in that area? What are the things that you could be fearing that if it actually happens, oh crap, I'm going to have to then be responsible for this. Oh crap, I'm then going to be responsible for that. Oh crap, if I actually make that happen, then I'm going to have to do this more often. If I actually get to there, maybe they're going to realize that I am, you know, a fraud. If I do get that promotion, maybe they're going to realize that I have been just kind of you know, flying by the seat of my pants that I have been getting by without really knowing what I'm doing. So it's the fear of success of actually getting there. And so what is that in your life? What areas are you fearing right now? Because it could work out, not that it couldn't. I think it's an interesting way to look at your life. And Maybe on another podcast, we'll discuss once you've figured out what those things are, how we can get past that and how we can move through that. And maybe that's the topic for the next podcast. I'll let Joseph handle that one. He's more tactical than I am. So with that, guys, this is episode 129 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!